going guys welcome to the channel I'm Leon and this is budget pond keeping if you're new or just passing through please consider clicking the subscribe button it really really helps me out and everybody is more than welcome so yeah let's crack on with the video cheers guys right how's it going guys um, I'm just starting to move all my big rocks and everything over to here but uh, I want to save my future Save a few of these little plants, uh, them uh, them winter ones, I don't know what they're called. I want to save my um, lavender because that's where the bees mainly come. This is just normal flowers. I had them at a poundland and they've survived all winter and they're bloody booming now. But yeah, anyway, so also I've got an apple tree here that I don't want to die. Cause I've had that for a few, couple of years now and it's just started to take off. So I need to root that up. Um, also, I've got this sort of piney tree thing, whatever it is. I've not got a clue. Somebody give it me at the tip. It was in a little metal pot like that, and it's grown well. And then I've got my acer in the pot. But the, the, the only thing I'm worrying about is my habernatchery. I don't want to disturb it. I'm going to have to make sure there's no newts or anything in there, because otherwise this is just game over. And that section, that section will have to stay. But... <laughs> Now with my luck, I'm going to bang on this or, or lift it up and a million rats are going to run out of there. I know what my looks like. So, I'll have to get the torch in there and bang on it a bit and everything. But yeah, I just hope it's not full of rats. So I'm going to carry on moving these rocks and then I'll, uh, I'll start digging up the plants that I want to save. I.e. the two trees and the fuchsia bush, bush, lavender and a few other bits like so. Yeah, All right, so I'm going to get cracking. I'll be back soon. Right, how's it going guys? I've made a start today, so I've got my two trees out, uh, my fuchsia and a couple of bubble plants that I wanted to save, wherever I put them, uh, that grass, a couple of trees in there, some lavender and that. Um, but yeah, so that's where we are at the minute. Not sure what I'm going to do next because I need to, uh, I've, got, I've got enough wire to extend that to put my electrics in the shed but I want a big run of uh, pipe to protect those wires because you know that is not that's not safe I'm not happy with that so I'm going to get some um, some sort of conduit or um, I've got like a massive length of three inch pipe might be a bit overkill but yeah and then I can put some metal conduit up there or whatever I'll have to do some research on how to do it because I'm not happy with that at all so yeah right electrics aside um, yeah, so the next I've got all the stuff out I want to keep. I need to get rid of that ivy before it spreads everywhere. Um, and then, yeah, so the next thing I'll be doing is either moving... So, it's hard to show the gradient of this garden um, in here from where I'm standing, but it is quite steep. So, yeah, doubtful I'll be able to pull that down because I don't know what's underneath here. So if I came right down to level with here... I don't know what's there, so yeah, I've had a good few ideas off people, which has been really helpful, so um, probably I'll, I'll level this to a certain degree, drag it down a little bit, and then um, I can ch uh, cut chunks of this off to make little stumps, or get some 4x4s just to raise it up a bit here, uh, hopefully come up to about there, but yeah, or um, my other idea was put a retaining wall across there and then Andy's mentioned yeah fill it all in and then you've got a flat area to put some tanks or barbecue whatever and then I'll have a step down and then the deck coming across so yeah not 100% sure on what I'm doing yet but just thought I'd make a start while I had some time like you know what I mean and uh, yeah and get me thinking cap on now about stage two right and guys I should be back soon Right, um, yeah, so next day now I've decided I'm going to have a look what bits I've got and try and sort these electrics out before I do anything else there. Um, I can move that out of the way and then that's all free there so then I can start levelling down. I think I'll probably go with some blocks across there and a flat area at the top if I can get away with it. So, yeah. It's a big area to cover with decking, so I don't know whether to do a smaller deck, you know. And then have some planting areas around the back of it. Because otherwise it's going to be, it's going to cost a fortune to be fair. But yeah, I'm going to have a look at these electrics now. See what I can do and then I'll get back to you. Cheers guys. Right, how's it going guys? 
Um, yes, so the electrics box gone, old switch box, I'll keep that for something else. Ooh. So what I've done is, I know it's not the best idea in the world, but I've put my power leads um, through this drain pipe. That's just to protect it for now. I'm going to do something better than this eventually, but um, I might just pull that out and get some, um, I don't know, 20 25 mil pipe with some elbows and everything and do it all properly wrap it with some electrical warning tape and then bury it a bit like but yeah that's made it safer for now so i can dig and do all everything i want but the thing i wanted to show you was oh before i do there we go salvage some blocks i've got one more in the uh, filter house that i can use yes but the main thing i'm chuffed about as soft as it's going to seem is i have got my pump control box where I need it happy days so now when I'm cleaning my filters um, when, I, when I can pause it instead of having to run around to that stupid little electrics box um, and yeah I can let it fill up, pause it, clean it so much easier so yeah chuffed to bits with that um, so yeah next thing I need to do is get digging oh yeah I've moved my uh, there's young Christopher happy as Larry I've moved my float switch over here as well so I didn't have to uh, extend the cable on that and then use a chop block and everything so I thought I'd just whack it over there but, uh, I might paint that black with some pond paint eventually or we'll get a green one or something I don't know but yeah so that's that all sorted I'm gonna have a brew and then I'm gonna get digging cheers guys all right how's it going guys um, yeah, so you know, obviously in my main hobby, koi, another hobby, carp fishing, and then another one, metal detecting. Soft as it sounds, I'm just going to scan this area, full of iron. I might get my pinpointer out. into the 70s I'll get me pinpointer and see what it is I'll be back in a sec right, I just want to target it properly right, let's pinpoint it hmm have a little butchers right. bloody hell what is that ah no wonder it was going mental. It's a giant piece of steel. <laughs> anyway, right. I ain't going to keep messing about with this now. I need to crack on. Right, guys, I'll be back soon. I might take you out, uh, take you out with me one of the days. Do a bit of metal detecting. Um, see what we can find. But, yeah, I'm going to get cracking on. Right. Right, how's it going, guys? Um, yeah, so I've just had a knock at the door. I'll just straighten that over so slightly from the postman. Um, just had my delivery come from Eco Filtration. Just want to say a massive thanks to those guys for supporting me on this project. Uh, I.e., the new bottom drains that are going to be going onto the pond. Yeah, so uh, I've had two aerated bottom drains and a few other bits and gubbins. I need a few more bits, like um, a couple of elbows and whatnot. But I've got all my four-inch pipe work. Got my ball valve, uh, T piece, uh, a few bits and bobs. Yeah. Um, when I mentioned in the last video that it was a new product, what what I should have said was it's a new product to eco filtration. Um, I I haven't seen these uh, bottom drains anywhere else, and the price is what really drew me towards it. 
um, it's a full kit so you get um, you get your sump, four inch sump bottom drain with a rubber membrane on the top uh, as an air diffuser you also get all your airline with it you have uh, which with this as well it's one of the ones where you have the airline under the the pond so you haven't got to have like bloody tubes all through your water and everything like but yeah um we'll, we'll be doing a lot more uh in-depth look at these when i'm actually laying them in the pond and everything but yeah i'll turn you around now and we'll have a quick look at them and uh yeah we'll crack on from there cheers guys okay so here it is um what i'll do in a second i'll put a screenshot of the fact sheet all about this um I oh, know either in the corner or a full screen so you can screenshot it but yeah 109 pound each these are and as I say it's a full kit so you get your dome your sump and all your airline all comes with it which is uh, at a bargain price because I was looking at normal bottom drains I was thinking oh yeah yeah that'll do they're only cheap are they normal bottom drains and I was thinking I don't want all bloody if I'm minimizing stuff i.e getting rid of the retro drain I don't want all bloody airlines and air stones cluttering it up. And also, I didn't want the one with the airline or the air diffuser, sort of, should I say, around the top. Because you've still got to have an airline floating about in your water, going to there or sunk on the bottom if you've got sinking airline. So, yeah, this one does away with that. Minimises clutter in your pond. So, you'd have your, obviously, your four-inch pipe and then that's your airline. Your liner would be here. So, all this stuff will be under your pond. And uh, all you'll see is your rubber membrane, which diffuses the air like so. Yeah, um, I'll get this camera set up a bit more stable now, and I'll open it and show you what you get in the box. Cheers, guys. Okay, excuse the mess. As you saw earlier in the video, I've just been rewiring the shed, uh, the filter house, and everything. So yeah, all right, let's have a little butcher, see what we've got. second just get rid of the invoice so yeah i'll put a proper screenshot of this so you can uh, read all the details you could screenshot there if, if you wanted to let's just turn it over okay so yeah there's some more details there you probably can't see that light but I'll, uh, I'll take a decent photo of these so you can have a read through it if it's something that interests you. So yeah, right. First of all, we've got the dome. I don't know if you can see that there. It's uh, full of tiny little holes. So the air will come through this uh, airline up the central column and then be diffused from that. So basically all you will see is that dome on the bottom of your pond like that so yeah all right so we've got the dome let's get all this out your ceiling flange whatever they're called some extra insulation for me there bonus oh god there's your sum and you also get supplied with this um a really really long length of airline so yeah, that's PVC, same as your, or whatever, same as your normal pipe like, but uh, flexible. And then you get your stem for the middle. I'm probably saying all the wrong names here. Your gaskets for all the fittings, your screws to uh, seal the, uh, sandwich the liner between the sump and the ring, which is there. So yeah, this is just a brief look at this. I'll, I'll um read through it all get all the proper details for you for when we're actually installing it but basically yeah that pipe sits in there like that or the other way one of the two your airline which is there will connect to this nut here so that will be pushing your air through that pipe and then uh, you cut it down to size thread your uh, dome onto that like that obviously you're going to trim it down to your, the height you want it um, 
just a finger's width probably and then there you go so your air will come out through this and I thought they were brilliant for the price anyway 109 quid and it comes as a kit so you're literally getting everything you need in there um, by your four inch drain pipe like so yeah chuffed to bits with that right um We'll have a little butchers at me uh, ball valve and the other gubbins that I've got. And then uh, I'll go and crack on down the garden and get some digging done. But yeah, we'll have a proper in-depth look at these um, in a few weeks' time. Right, back in a sec. Right, yep, yeah, so we've got two of them sub-air bottom drains, which I'm chuffed a bit about. I really love them. Top quality. So in here, we've got a big, giant, bloody... Oh god, that's heavy, man. Uh, four inch ball, ball valve. And if I can get through this stuff with the um, flanges to bring it down to uh, 110 mil pipe. Tank connector in case I can't get a sieve and I've got to build my own. So yeah, that's there just in case. Uh, I've got a T piece um, and there's a a few more bits that I need to order when I've got the money, i.e. elbows, etc. and a few other bits, but I'll, I'll show you them as they come. Right, but what I wanted to ask you guys is, how would you set this up, right? So, here's my ideas. Um, so, yeah, number one would be, say this is the pond, bottom drain, bottom drain, connected to a um, offset T, I've drawn that wrong, so say that's an offset T facing that way then come in 45 under the ground and then a 90 up into my filter house which that would be my, my preferred way of doing it because I'll get an even draw off both drains um, the only thing is if I had to rod it it would be really awkward because it's only going to ever rod this side uh, or number two have a um, straight run from uh, let's say bottom drain two and bottom drain one but because this is a shorter section I'm going to be getting more pull off this side uh, and then yeah a uh, 45T and whatever back out into my filter house or my third option is to have two straight runs straight from the bottom drains and two outlets into my filter house uh, which would mean I'd need another ball valve and loads more gubbins and bits and bobs. So yeah, out of them three, which would you think would be the best? I mean, that would be the, the, the best for, if it ever got blocked, I could just rod either side. Um, that would give me the better draw, probably, because it's all equal. And then that's the other option. So yeah, which one would you think, or or maybe not any of these, which way do you think I should set it up? That is the question. Right, so yeah, that was just a little brief look at uh, these bottom drains. But um, as I say, I'll do a dedicated video to them um, as we're emptying the pond and setting them all up properly. So right, I'm going to go and crack on guys. I'll be back with you soon. Cheers. Oh yeah, and also I've got my pipe work there. Probably got too much. Because um, I think there's six pieces in there. See, because I'm not very good with measurements, as you're probably well aware of. Uh, I ordered three three-metre pieces, but um, obviously sending them in a van, it's going to be a nightmare. So they're, they're halved, and yeah, there's six there. So I'll have to get some couplers or flanges, joining flanges, whatever they're called, live, but yeah. It's there, if I don't use it, I can use it for something else anyway. So yeah, right, let's crack on. Yeah, I'm just doing a bit more digging on this now, dragging some soil down just to try and get some sort of level, see how far the wall goes down. But, <coughs> pardon me, I didn't realize how big this habernatory actually was. It's like, yeah, if the wall goes down now, I don't know how far we'll know when we dig it up and all across here as well, so. Yeah, as to how deep it is, I do not know, but I'm sure we'll find out soon. Right, I'll be back soon. Right, <coughs> pardon me. I'm just going to um, lift up this abernatory now, just to see what's inside there. Nothing's, got, nothing's come out over the last day or so, so I'm going to lift that up. Then I'm going to go and um, 
clean the fry tank out, chuck some koi masters in. We'll have a quick look at the fry and uh, yeah, we'll move from there like so. Yeah, I'm just going to try and lift this up now on camera, but whether or not I can. Ooh. Okay. That's smaller than I remember, you know. Bloody hell, it is smaller than... <laughs> I, I remember, you know what it is, right? I had two of these. This is the middle section, and then I had a massive basin for the bottom. Um, and I thought I'd put that one in there, unless it's right at the back. So, yeah, right. It doesn't look like nothing's been living in there, actually, as it goes. Let's have a look. Sorry about the camera work. No. Nothing. Not even a bloody bug. Unless they've all evacuated. In the last day or so. Hang on a minute. Yeah, no. Thankfully there was nothing in there. So I haven't disturbed anything. So, yeah. Oh, well. I was expecting a big load of rats to come out and I was going to scream like a girl on camera for you. <laughs> oh, God. Right, I'm going to go and clean this fry tank out um, and then we'll have a quick look at the fry and I'll probably sign off after that, like. But, yeah, um, loads to do, as always. Busy, busy, busy. Right, I'll be back soon. Crashy oil, lovely. Oh, it, it, there's Koi Master's advantage in if you're wondering why it's cloudy. Has anyone noticed that Koi Master's gives the fish the munchies big time? Always does on the main pond. Always seems to in here as well. As soon as you put it in, it makes them ravenous. I think that's a Benny Karashigoy there, just speaking to somebody the other day. The orange one, not the yellow one. Got them all gone. The big boy Barry. So best give these guys some food because that um, coin master's advantage is giving the munchies big time so no polaroid lens at the minute as you can probably tell just Barry to eat most of it got some really nice crash you go in there well look there's a mixture there's a nice little shower I'm not sure what that one is, it's either a Shiro uh, Becca or um, I don't know if it was a Matsukawabaki or what, but yeah, there's all sorts. Some really, really nice bright yellow kara uh, Karashis in here as well. And Deutz Achievers there, Platinum Ogon. Little Kajaku gone down there somewhere. That Kahaku there, it's already spoken for though, that one. Yeah, lovely, lovely mix of fish. See who else pops up. See if any of the shisui's make an appearance.
Shoes misses fish there, big blue. Another chag, metallic, I haven't got a clue what that one is, but it's really interesting. Lovely symmetrical scale pattern, it's got like a, like a gold hue to it. Awesome little fish that is. Yeah, anyway, I'm going to go and crack on. Right then, I think I'll leave it there for this week. Um, yeah, loads to be getting on with in the next couple of weeks. Um, digging, digging and more digging. <laughs> well, yeah, I've got that much to do. I've got to sort this decking area out, then... Um, fry tank then hopefully I can get the liner sorted and get cracking on with these bottom drains on the pond but as I said before in the video um, I'll do a proper in-depth look at these bottom drains um, as we're fitting them and uh, yeah we'll have a proper look then eh? but yeah as always guys a massive thanks for watching and I'll speak to you soon cheers guys